were running pretty much totally off, off solar. It's definitely worked out very well financially. 84% of what we consumed came from our own generation. This is January. We've produced nearly 12 kilowatt hours today. So you're 100% on running off green energy right now. Yeah. And that's including charging your car and your home and your batteries are fully charged. We don't need to use that dirty energy because all the energy that we're using is green. It's a really nice feeling. Uh, so Chris was one of our first jobs, um, probably about 18 months ago now that we um, did that. And I remember personally uh, uh, delivering the materials and putting all the panels in your garden and getting the batteries up into the loft. Yeah. Um, so you've been with it for 18 months now, yeah. which means you've done two winters and a summer pretty much. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah, we did uh, exactly two winters and a, we're, we're halfway, most of the way through our second winter, I hope. Yeah. yeah. So what I wanted to do when when we got the installation done was I wanted to have enough battery um, storage to tide us through the day without having to, to use the grid. So essentially, um, although um, the upfront costs were higher, what I wanted was um, independence from the grid um, as far as possible during the day, which we got. Um, or we would have if it weren't for the fact that we are charging cars. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. So how, yeah, so far then, how has it been? It's been terrific. It's been, um, so the big difference that it's made is that um, outside the charging of the cars, which um, is, is, is sort of set, the, the, the system doesn't generate enough to charge the cars um, all the time, because we've got two electric cars. Other than that, we're running pretty much totally off, off solar. Um, in the winter months, what we've done is we've charged the battery in the loft um, at night time over cheap rate, and the battery has been enough to, to run us during the day quite comfortably. Yeah. In fact, more than comfortably. Um, and then in the summer, um, as soon as we start heading into the, to, to the longer days, yeah, then, then um, I tweak the system so that I don't charge the battery at night and the battery gets charged during the day from the solar. And then um, we put in the, um, the, the water heater too, so that we're taking any excess generation and heating our water from it. And then what's left is, is, is exported to the grid. Okay. And we're getting some small payments from that, which is nothing significant, but at least it's not going to waste. Okay. So, uh, because you've got, you had 15 panels installed, mm -hmm. there were seven facing sort of southeast, and I yeah. think about eight facing southwest, or yeah. one or the other. Um, so, what I, what, I've, um, what I really like about your installation is that because you have got two different roof aspects, that you, you oh. get a, um, the delivery of power yeah. is smoother across the whole day. Yeah. And you can actually see each string. We've done one string um, on the southeast and one on the southwest. Yeah. And you can see one string is performing well in the morning and the other one performs well in the evening. So. And it goes right, well right into, the, right into quite late in the evening, actually. It mm. does, it does. So, you, in the summer months, um, and even when it's not sunny, um, we're still getting a lot of generation during the day. So yeah, it's been, it's been really good. So um, we, we then um, bought two electric cars to replace our, our petrol cars. And um, what we do is we charge them generally at night. Um, so that, what that does is that it, firstly it takes um, the battery, so it empties the battery. Um, so for any, any so, so any, any surplus that has off. been charging the battery during the day, yeah. uh, that goes into the cars and then it draws from the grid um, at, um, at cheap rate and, um, and charges the cars. Yeah. So the, the car batteries are, are, are big, um, much bigger than the, the house battery. Huge, aren't they? Yeah, what, like yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Each, you know, yeah. and whereas the, 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 the loft is what, 15? I think we've got 13, yeah. yeah. So obviously that's... Um, not going to charge both cars from 0 to 100 but what what generally you, you do is you you, you trickle you you charge from somewhere like 50 to, to 70 you don't sort of keep it you know you don't run it to oh, zero yeah. and then charge it to 100 so actually because of the way we charge the cars and we don't charge them both on the same night either of course um that actually works quite well um what we're not doing as a whole is is we is parking them outside during the day and charging them directly from the solar during the day that's generally not how we how we operate, but because we've got batteries, we don't need to actually. We still get the benefit of the solar power. Yeah, you drain your battery, don't you? Whatever's left over, any surplus, then that goes into the car. So your, your batteries are ready, ready to receive more solar the, the following day. Yeah. So, um, so what that means is that um, obviously, when you when you get a system installed, you hope that that means that you're going to be completely free and independent from the grid, and that you're never going to have to pay for electricity again. Well, that that 
that's not the case. We do have to pay for electricity. But um, we pay generally much less because we've got the cheap rate um, overnight because of the battery. And also we're consuming much less. So if, if we had bought the cars, charged the cars before having any of this installed, I think we would see just like phenomenally higher bills than we are actually getting. What, what, what we've got is what bills are not. They are, they're definitely less than they were, but we're still um, you know, paying monthly bills. But really, when you look at it, the monthly electricity bill is mostly for charging the car and is far, far less than we would have been paying for petrol. Um, so yeah, it's definitely worked out very well for, you know, financially in terms of monthly expenditure. Um, you know, there was the outlay getting the system installed, but in terms of our monthly bills, definitely helping hugely, yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the consideration. Yes, you're spending more on electricity right now because you're charging two cars, but yeah. then compared to the petrol bill, yeah. you would have had to charge. I mean, at roughly how many miles do you do? Um, oh God, well, um, so my, I'm doing 25,000 miles a year because I drive um, weekly wow. to, to Belgium and back. Okay. And my, my wife's doing um, 15 because we've got the daily school run and the daily, the kids are at school uh, about a 20 minute drive away and, and near where, where she works. So we're actually, that's one of the reasons why we, yeah. we went electric was simply because we do so much mileage that we were burning an awful lot of fuel. Yeah. And what are you getting night rate for your property? I think at the moment it's 10p. I've seen it as low as seven and a half. Yeah, it's been, it's been lower. Um, it went up a bit, so it's around, I think it's around 10p. Yeah. Yeah. Who's your energy provider? Octopus. Yeah. So we were with Bulb. And then, yeah. um, and then Octopus bought them out, so yeah. um, we're in plenty of credit. <laughs> so uh, it's Octopus Go. So I'm paying um, 9p between half past midnight and half past four in the morning, and then 30p um, the rest of the time. That's good, isn't it? Pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. And then- um, I mean, Most people are paying 30p anyway, so yeah. then the fact yeah. you've got the added yeah. bonus of, of charging yeah. later at night. So even so even if I do have to charge the car during, I mean, sometimes, you know, it happens where you, you suddenly realize you're both a bit low and um, the sun isn't shining and you've got a trip to make so you think oh, okay that's very rare mm. that we actually do end up charging during the day from home but even if we do it's still only 30p yeah. uh, per kilowatt hour which is way cheaper than petrol so yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's huge really if you yeah. think about it like that yeah so you take your petrol out of the out of the equation or you know yeah, you're saving on petrol yeah. um, I, I, I don't suppose you notice much change in your gas bill do you with re the reduction like in the summertime, especially if you've got your um, your eddy, which is heating your hot water. Yeah. Then... Um, so with the way that we use it, so we have the eddy. The eddy um, in the summertime, we're practically not using any gas at all. Mm. Have the eddy heat the water in the mornings from from the grid if it's not already hot enough, just so that we're sure that we've got um, enough hot water in the mornings. So I think I've set it so that it'll boost every morning at about five for, for half an hour, okay. um, if it's not already hot enough. But generally it's already hot enough anyway because of the, the overnight. And then if it's boosting, it's boosting it from the battery too anyway, so yeah. yeah. So you found, you found a balance then with the, you know, getting that right so you're not caught yeah. short. Because I, I tried it in the summer, um, we turned our gas boiler off completely yeah. for, for two weeks. Yeah. And for the most part, the Eddy took care of all of our hot water needs. Yeah, yeah. The, it's sometimes, Exactly. There, there, there are a couple of occasions where you know um, everybody's ended up having a bath, uh, and by the end of the second bath, you suddenly realise, oh, uh, we've run out. So then you hit boost on the on the app, and half an hour later, you've got the hot water again. So that's fine. And then it's taking it from the battery first. So, I mean, to be honest, coming coming to us 18 months after installation, it's we've now we're so settled into the routine that actually I'm no longer checking it very r regularly. So I'm having to refresh my memory as to actually what we've done. It's all just, yeah, ticking over. Yeah. Yeah. The way we set it. The, the complicated bit was, um, the complicated bit is in the shoulder when you, when you're flipping from your winter, um, strategy to your summer strategy, uh, which, which is all about configuring the system so that it knows how, when to charge the battery, from the grid and to what point it should charge the battery from the grid. So in the winter time, you want to wake up with the battery at around 80% so that you've got enough to tide you through the day if the sun isn't shining. Whereas in the summer, you want the battery to be only at around sort of 25% so that if it's a if it's a dark day and you haven't got enough solar, you can at least do your morning 
business and boil a kettle and have coffee. Um, and what that means is that there's a bit of configuration in the app uh, to do sort of twice a year where you change the parameters, um, which I think the first couple of times we did that, we had to sort of talk to you to get to, to walk us through it. Yeah. But I think now we're okay with that, yeah. It's still like all things, once you've worked your way around it, then it's fine. And as you said, you know, we're always, you know, you know, you can always give us a call to say, give us a hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And most of the time we can remotely set it anyway. Yeah. That's always been really helpful, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you got the bills then? Should we yeah. look, at, look at the figures? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 11th of January 2022 to 10th of February 2022, um, we spent um, 90, pound, 90 pounds on electricity and 120 pounds on gas. So uh, 210 pounds in total for the month plus of course yeah petrol would have been well what are we what are we charging on petrol a month i mean is it 500 pounds at least on, on petrol easily yeah 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 um and then um and then the last month which is of course the summer so the last month before we got the system put in it was um 151 pounds so 90 pounds on electricity and 60 pounds on gas that was for August to September 2022. Okay, so in December, so December was our, our busy, our hungriest month for, for electricity from the grid. So that was, um, so we used 1.2 megawatts, megawatt hours in, in December. That's all car charging, really. Which is it? all car yeah. charging. And so actually, that's. And, and so now, now I'm looking at this because I'm seeing a big rise in wind use, yes. but actually what's happening is you're charging your vehicles. Exactly. And although you are charging them off grid a lot of the time, the battery is compensating for that. Exactly. So that's why your summer usage is pretty low. And that's, that's not just powering your home, that's also charging your vehicles. Exactly. And then of course the winter usage because the solar is just not, not quite as strong. Yeah, so, so really all the readings need to be seen in the context of charging the cars. Yeah. If, if, you, if you took the cars out of this, um, I think you'd be seeing a pretty flat line to be honest. Yeah. So do you want yeah, to look at that yeah. and see? So if I if I take out everything except the solar, that's the solar charge, um, the solar generation yeah. over the course of the year. So you can see June is clearly the that's yeah. the golden month. But yeah. then, uh, but look at April. Like April's when yeah. between March and April, there's quite a big contrast yeah. there as well. Yeah. And then if we um, pop in consumption, essentially inverse curves. The less we generate, the more we import. Mm. Um, and then if you look at what we're getting from the battery, that's pretty much flat over the year because we're using pretty much the full capacity of the battery. Um, and then um, the other bit that's interesting is exporting to the grid, um, where, um, so again, here, it, it matches the, the sunniest months. Yeah, so in um, particularly in April and April and Brilliant. June, yeah, I mean, up to about 370 kilowatt hours mm -hmm. of export. Mm -hmm. If you can get paid you know, if you've got paid 10 pence, that's going to be 37 pounds. Some tariffs are doing about 15 pence for export. So that yeah. would be, you know, about 50, 60 pound a month that you could get. Yeah. So that's, um, so on that day, 84% uh, of what we consumed came from um, our own generation. And what day of the year is this? This is January. That is the 24th January. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we did uh, charge the battery overnight for a little bit. There was still some export as well. And there was, yeah, even some export when <laughs> the sun shines. Exporting in yeah. January. Yeah. See, that was a, a miserable day. Um, so again, the car was charged at night and the battery, uh, but absolutely, pretty much absolutely no generation at all. Um, so we imported it. We, we ended up importing a little bit during the day at around 9pm, right yeah, where, where we'd run out of battery on that day. But that's, you know, that's unusual. Most days you'll be able to get through the entire day from battery alone having charged it at night. So we, we're practically using no cheap uh, top rate electricity. All the electricity we're using from the grid um, is, at, is at the cheap rate, which is at 9p. Um, and um, everything else is, um, is, is generated. So just to quantify that then, your, your usage, you're, you're a family of four, is that right? Yeah. Um, typical busy household. You've got 13 kilowatt hours of battery storage. That sees you through yeah. the day yeah. and gets you, gets yeah. you to the evening, yeah. yeah. So that's a... So in terms of like sizing then it's it's pretty spot on so right now um we can see that we are um just past the peak 
um, which would make sense as a half past one now. Um, but we see that we've had a nice steady curve over the day, so good sunshine, but given the time of year it's quite a flat, sh quite a shallow curve compared to other times of the year. Yeah. So self-consumption, so 85% of our production we've consumed and we have exported 15% to the grid because I hadn't plugged my car in. Load consumption shows that eight, almost 80% has been imported, but that's because we charged the car overnight um, and that will look better by the end of the day. Okay. Um, and yeah, we've produced nearly 12 kilowatt hours today. So we just look at this part here. This is showing how much is being generated by PV. So you're doing, is that 2.9 kilowatts? Yes, 2.96, so 3 kilowatts at the moment. 3 kilowatts of PV is being generated right now. Battery is already full. So In January. So this is, the, this is the winter month. It is sunny today, so that, that, you know, it is a good day for generation. But yeah, even in winter, you're getting 3 kilowatts. So that, that could... 100% you know, power a, a kettle, a washing machine. Yeah, so we're, we're currently consuming all of those three kilowatts, but that's because the car's charged, plugged in. So the car is currently being charged from the sunshine and the rest of the house is running from the uh, solar as well. So if I look at the, um, so I look, if I look at the car, um, so the car is currently getting 2.2 .2 kilowatts. Um, so the car can, the, the Zappi can charge it up to, uh, at up to seven kilowatts, but 2.2 .2 kilowatts is, 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 is perfectly um, perfectly reasonable for a, a trickle charge during the day to top it up so that would cover a school run and the house itself is only consuming 0.3 of a kilowatt despite all our lights being on and everything and the computers being on so yeah, yeah. and 2.6 is coming from the um, from the solar nothing's coming from the grid and uh, the um, eddy uh, is on pause which means that that's fully charged so um, our water is as hot as it's going to get so look at that right in the middle there, 100%. So you're 100% on running off green energy right now. Yeah. And that include, that's including charging your car and your home and your batteries are fully charged. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's 26th of January. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it feels nice. <laughs> I suppose the question is, you've had it installed for 18 months now. Um, are you glad you made the decision? Is there anything that you regret? Is there anything you would have done differently now that you've got the knowledge that you have? De definitely don't regret it at all. Very happy that we did that. It was a really good thing to do. It's just nice knowing that you're not uh, burning power, especially at the peak hours, you know, in the winter, in the winter evening time, sun goes down, uh, what sort of, you know, Jan late January, it's getting dark five, at five. Yeah. Um, um, you know, cookers on, washing machines on, it's fine. We're not using anything from the grid because it's all coming from the battery. It's able to cope with the, with the peak. So that's what's nice, knowing that in the winter months, at peak hours, when normally they'd be firing up the coal power stations, we don't need to use that dirty energy because all the energy that we're using is green. Either we took it from uh, night time from the grid uh, using a green energy provider that's using wind power or, or, or um, you know, uh, some other Hydro. form of re re yeah, yeah. Yeah, re renewables, or it's our own power that we've microgenerated here during the day. So it's a really nice feeling, even though, um, so what I'm saying is that it, it, we, we are also saving money, which is great, um, but you know, there was also quite a bit of capital investment involved in actually getting the system put up. So in terms of actually making money on it, that's still somewhere in the future. What, what I really like is just knowing that um, the power that we're consuming, doesn't matter what time of year, what time of day, the power we're consuming is green power and that makes me feel very happy. So yeah, that was definitely worth it for that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Excellent.